Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we are still working on curvature uh, of a curve, what it is at any given point. Uh, this is 12.5 in Calculus 3. Uh, we're using the 11th edition of Anton. Let's just jump right into it. We've got some examples for you. We're going to start with the vector in 3 space, r of t equals 4t, 3 cosine t, and 3 sine t. Okay? Uh, and we're looking for curvature. So find kappa of t. And we've got a couple formats, recall. We can do t prime of t, the magnitude over the magnitude of r prime of t. Or we can do magnitude of r prime cross r double prime. Again, with the t's, but I didn't leave myself a lot of room to write this. Uh, Wow, I just wrote on another piece of paper. And over here we have the magnitude of r prime of t cubed. I don't know which one we want to use yet. Uh, so let's just figure out what r prime of t and r double prime look like, or if, if it's easy to use. So if we do r prime of t, the 4t goes to 4, 3 cosine becomes negative 3 sine. And three sine becomes three cosine. Uh, so we need the magnitude of it no matter what we do. It's the denominator. Uh, so we take the magnitude of this and four squared is 16. And we get our same song with sine squared and cosine squared. Again, that part equals one. 16 plus nine is 25. The magnitude of r prime of t is just 25 or five. So I think it might be easy just to do the tangent vector rather than doing a cross product. So I'm going to go with this right side one. Uh, so I divide r prime of t by 5, and I get our tangent vector. r prime of t divided by magnitude of r prime of t. So we got 4 fifths, negative 3 fifths sine t, and 3 fifths cosine t. We need the derivative and the magnitude of the derivative. Uh, so we've got two more steps. Uh, we'll take the derivative first. Four fifths goes to zero. Uh, negative three fifths sine goes to negative three fifths cosine. And then three fifths cosine goes to negative three fifths sine. Okay. We take the magnitude of that. We have negative three fifths squared. And with our sine squared plus cosine squared, again, going to one. This is why we like trig functions in this stuff. Uh, we get the magnitude of t prime of t is just three fifths. That's pretty good. Because I got three fifths for this one. And I got the magnitude of r prime is five. So kappa is three fifths divided by. What the hell? I wrote 25. That should just say 5. Uh, and 3 fifths divided by 5 is 3 20 fifths. That is a constant number. It is independent of time. So this is just a circle. That's exactly what that tells us. This is just a circle. Well, is it though? Not really. It's close to a circle, right? R of t had a 4t in it, so it's actually spiraling out along the x-axis. Uh, but in the yz, like if you're looking on the yz plane, it looks like a circle. Uh, but that curvature remains constant since that spiral is steady the whole way. It never changes. It's spiral steady. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, let's do R of t equals e to the t cosine t, e to the t sine t, and e to the t for the z component. We're going to use t equals zero, and we're going to find curvature and radius of curvature. Okay. I don't know that I showed you radius of curvature yet, but we're going to do it. Radius of curvature is uh, rho equals one over kappa. That's the radius of curvature. I think that's coming up in 12.5D. Look at me doing these videos out of sequence. All right, so let's take the derivative. 
Uh, we've got a product, so we've got to do the the product rule. I do the uh, I do, will do this every time: derivative of the first, then the derivative of the second. So I took the derivative of e to the t, cosine t stayed the same. Then I took the left e to the t and took the derivative of cosine, and we get negative sine. So that's my x component. Uh, the y component looks similar, but sine has a positive derivative of cosine. And the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. Don't we love e to the t? It's consistent. It doesn't change his mind. So what's the magnitude of that? Remember, we need the magnitude for everything. Uh, this should look familiar. We did this a little while ago. Remember to treat it as a square and do a multiply the two parentheses together. So I show it out again here. Look at that, I'm missing a T. I've got E to the T, the E to the two T I'm able to pull out of the radical is E to the T. And the reason why I wrote it like this is every single component had an E to the T. So I just factored that out and then took the squares. Or you could have taken the squares first, then factored it out, but you're gonna get that step. Uh, we do all this stuff. We get cosine and squared and sine squared from this. We also get a negative two sine t cosine t. When we do the second parentheses, we get the cosine squared and sine squared again. Uh, and now we get a positive two sine t cosine t. Again, those cancel. We're left with one and one and one. So I've got e to the t root three. And that is my magnitude of r prime. Okay. So our tangent vector is, just, I, I chose to go tangent again, because if I thought if I do the 10, rather than taking the second derivative of this, second derivative of this is gonna get even uglier because I've got four things I gotta do product rules on. But if I divide through by the magnitude of R prime of T, I can clear out all those E to the T's with this bad boy right here. So I said, let's do that. Let's divide by that. R prime of T over the magnitude of R prime of T. Good stuff here. Tangent ended up being helpful here. Uh, and so we still have it. It was dividing by it. So the root three goes on the, the denominator. The E to T and the denominator cancels out those E to the T's. Well, our vector is just one over root three and then cosine T minus sine T cosine t plus sine t, and then one. That's the tangent vector. Uh, let's finish this problem out. We take the derivative of the tangent vector, uh, and we have it right here, one over root three, that didn't change. We got negative sine of t minus cosine of t. Uh, we've got negative sine of t plus cosine of t, and we've got zero, the derivative of one is zero. And we need the magnitude of this. So again, we have sine t plus cosine t squared and a cosine minus a sine squared. Uh, I factored out the negative one so I could write this like this, but negative one squared is positive one, it's just gonna go away, it's like magic. Uh, again, we multiply all that crap out. We get some two sine t and some negative two sine t to cancel. We've got one here. We've got one here. That's a root. That's two under the root. So t prime of t is just root two over root three. Now remember, kappa is t prime over magnitude. I'm sorry, magnitude of t prime over magnitude of r prime. So let's plug that in. Square root of two over square root of three divided by e to the t root three uh, just gives us kappa as a function of time is the square root of two over three e to the t. Uh, we were asked to evaluate this at t equals zero. We plug it in. Kappa is zero, e to the t is just one. So we got root two over three. And the radius of curvature is one over kappa. Uh, so we flip that bad boy over, three over root two, and we rationalize the denominator. Uh, and that's it for that. We got one more video in this section. Peace.